ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಸಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಹೃತಯೇ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಬಾಲಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಜನಕ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ದಶರಥ ರಿಸೀವಿಂಗ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀತಾ and now in this chapter we will see one of the greatest ancient traditions of bharata where whenever there is a marriage the two parties sit in front of each other while someone who is elder to both the families or someone who is elder knowing about the family of one of them find the entire history of the lineage of that family might look ridiculous here as i go on reading about the several forefathers of rama being explained by the sages however in modern science and our psychology we call this as genogram and whenever a husband and wife in a, especially in a family if there is a psychological problem because of which the husband and wife are having problem it is a customary for the psychologist while counseling them go through their genogram to study what led to their behavior so the behavior of an individual whether it's a bride or to the groom their behavior is more guided by this genogram and the same thing is substantiated by Carl Jung when he says about collective consciousness collective consciousness comes through generations of people whose genes have been passed on to the next generation and their behavior is guided by the behavior of the previous generation of people and it is a great ancient indian tradition but they divulge the reveal the details of all the forefathers on either side which will allow them to decide and finally gives their permission for a marriage the following day king janaka having carried out the sacrifice with the assistance of the priests Sattva Shri Shatananda, my younger brother, the virtuous and mighty Kushadvaja resides in the city of Sankashya, which is surrounded by a most and battlements and mounted by heavy batteries, the river Ittu following, uh, flowing at its side and resembles the aerial chariot Pushka, the desire to see that excellent one who with liberality has assisted me in act of sacrifice it is meet that he should attend the marriage ceremony having spoken thus to shri shatananda certain attendants standing near were commanded by the king to set out thither at his command the messengers like gods riding out on the behest of indra went forth on swift horses to bring back the royal guest arriving at sankashya and being received by the king kushadvaja they acquainted him with king janaka's proposal the great king acquiescing to his request came to the capital of the sovereign of mithila and beholding the virtuous great soul janaka together with shri shatananda bowed down to him in salutation having occupied a royal seat in the assembly two illustrious brothers commanded their chief minister sudama sudamana saying o chief of counselors speedily approach the great sovereign dasharatha of limitless glory and bring that excellent one to my court together with the two princes and his ministers sudamana going to the encamp- encampment of king dasharatha and bowing down to him said o great hero o lord of ayodhya the sovereign of mithila humbly invites you with your spiritual preceptor your priests and your two sons to his assembly then king dasharatha attended by his friends and kinsmen came to the place where king janaka sat amid the sages and ministers and he the wise and eloquent monarch addressed king janaka saying o great king it is known to you that the chief of the house of ekshwaku is shri vasishta and my spokesman in all matters 
therefore with approval of shri vishwamitra he will relate the descent of our dynasty to you having spoken dasharatha became silent when shri vasishta then addressed king janaka and shri shatananda from brahman the unmanifest the eternal imperishable brahma came forth from him so they started the family tree right, right starting from brahma so vasishta is addressing this because vasishta knows the entire house of ikshvaku starting from brahma so he is narrating that story from brahman the unmanifest the eternal imperishable brahma came forth that is from parabrahma the brahma the creator came forth from him was prana produced maricha marichi or marichi begot kashyapa kashyapa begot surya surya begot vaivaswata and vaivaswata begot manu manu was the father of ikshvaku who was the first king of ayodhya the son of ikshvaku was kukti and his son was vikukshi illustrious vena was the son of vikukshi and vena's son was the mighty anaranya his son was pitru pitu and the son of pitu was trishanku great dundumara was the son of trishanku and his son was yuvash yuvanashwa the renowned mandhata was born of yuvanashwa and mandhata's son was named susandhi susandhi had two sons dravasandhi and prasenachet bharata was son of dravasandhi the renowned asit was the son of bharata clear only the one who follow the lineage right up to dasharatha and rama they were only consider three sons of asit were hihat haihaya alajangas and shashashwa shashwin chatavin those great kings who hostile to their father waged war against him and sent him into exile then king asit with his two consorts going in going to the himalayas there laid down his life leaving the queens pregnant where where one of them to destroy the fruit of others own i mean out of those two queens of asit one of them in order to kill the other he gave gave her poison at that time the sage of the family of begu dwelt on the heights of himalaya by name tuvana practicing penance there then the lotus eyed queen kalindi desirous of bearing an excellent son approached the sage who resembled a god and bowed before him the brahmin addressed the queen saying o fortunate one you bear in your womb a hero soon to be born together with poison don't have any anxiety queen faithful to her deceased lord kasita overcome with sorrow fearing the death of her child paid homage to the muni thereafter she bore a son born with the poison administered by the other wife and he was named sagara here gara means poison since he is born with the poison he is called as sagara sagara The son of Sagara was Asamanjasa and his son was Anshuman. We heard about this story back while explaining the story of Sagara. The son of Anshuman was Dilipa. The Dilipa's son was Bhagiratha. The son of Bhagiratha was Akustha and his son was Raghu. The son of Raghu, Prabhada, became a demon. and was subsequently called kalsh kalmashapada and his son was shangana the son of shangana was sudarshana and his son was agnivarna shigraga shigraga was the son of agnivarna and son of shigraga was manu 
मनु सनवास पशु 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 शक्रा पशु का एंड हिज सन वास अंबरेशा अंबरेशा सन वास नेम्ड नकुशा एंड हिज सन वास ययाति द सन ऑफ ययाति वास नाभागा द सन ऑफ नाभागा वास अजा एंड सन ऑफ अजा वास किंग दशरथा द टू सन्स ऑफ किंग दशरथा आर रामा एंड लक्ष्मणा Thus, the entire lineage, starting from Ekshvaku down to Rama and Lakshmana, are presented by Vasistha. O sage, I have recounted the genealogy of King Ekshvaku to you. All these kings were noble, virtuous, distinguished in their love of truth. King Dasharatha requests the hands of your daughters in marriage for his two sons. Who are in every way worthy to be your kinsmen, O chief of men, bestow your daughters on them. Thus ended chapter seventy of Malakanda in Ramayana, explaining the entire genealogy of Sri Rama, starting from Vishwaku down to him. Namaste, Sharada Devi, Ashmir Puramasini. स्वाहम प्रार्थये निद्यम विद्यादानं च देहि में पाए